so all right we're recording on this one this will drop down um, again we're going to do inflammation it's listed on your slide as chapter 31 it is not really your chapter 31 <laughs> right so by your reading this is when we were using the bulk and large palatal is chapter 31 so i was kind of stealing from my old presentation which made this work for me a little bit <laughs> yeah so we'll make it work so the first is is just a number for you to be aware of this is not a number that you need to memorize all right and this is just urinary output by age. It partially reflects squid nephritis, but it more so reflects what's clinical. Because think about what you're looking at. When we're looking at eyes and nose, what do we consider to be normal output for an adult? At least 30 mLs an hour. 30 mLs an hour, right? That's what we consider to be normal. In kids, because they are so unique based on what their size is, we also do their urinary outputs and what is expected by weight, just like we do their meds, just like we do some of their other pieces, right, their rough development. So infants, two milliliters per kilogram per hour. Children, so anything one to eight, right, we're going to say one to 13, because our next category is adolescent, <laughs> but one to eight works when we can lower adolescents. But 0 0.5 to one milliliters per kilogram an hour. So what do you notice? Yes, decreases. So how is that possible? Why are we decreasing the volume? I saw a hand here first. Hand the kidneys are maturing a little bit more. Right. So what can the kidneys then do? Filter and compensate. Right? Your S, your sense of gravity is going to be different in older kids than it is in infants. Because infants have immature kidneys and it needs they need to clear more fluids with the same amount of stuff, right? Same amount of body. Is that where you were headed? Are you going to go there? So we know that infants have to put out more. Now, does that mean they're going to have more physical volume than kids? No, because they still it's still wasted. We're still talking about a five kilogram kid versus a fifty kilogram kid, right? Like you get two kilos, but yeah, that fifty kilogram kid, you know. <laughs> um, but you're so the actual amount that you weigh and measure is still going to be less for an infant because it's just done over. But by proportion for what you would expect. Infants put out more volume by weight. Does that make sense? And then look at adolescent, 40 to 80 milliliters per hour. Still more than an adult. And that's what you have to increase. Yes. Yeah. Now, in they would be more than a adult, I think, so it'd be 18, like the 30 milliliters. Sure. This is still ballpark. But no, we, we want them to put out more because they still have more physical maturing to do, um, and there's still differences in their body simply because they're still growing. Think about it, look, um, we don't get to talk about necessarily kids here, because we talk about it in other courses, but think about kids are designed to grow. Their cells divide more rapidly, they need more oxygen, they need more energy because they are growing. We don't have to lay down at sleep and grow more uh, hepatic cells, but kids do, right? They have to grow more bone while they sleep. That's We don't have to do that every day. We're still growing in other ways, right? But different than what these kids need to do, which is why they have a higher oxygen demand, which is why they have higher metabolic rates, because they're growing. They have to do that in addition to their everyday running around that they do more of than we do as well, right? So they still are going to be putting out more fluid and more solute. Okay, so let's get into nephrotic syndrome. So there's two main processes where nephrotic syndrome wants to think about. So what does most of the filtering inside the kidney? What part? Glomeruli, right? So the glomeruli become really important in nephrotic syndrome because the, the glomeruli are doing the filtering, which allow things to pass or not pass into the urine, right? So when we're talking about nephrotic syndrome in general, this one I want you to think chronic. I think in your book it might even say chronic, right? But think chronic because this is not something that goes away for these kids. There is a second part. There is actually a variety of other types of nephrotic syndrome in your book. I just want you to know the two. Nephrotic, chronic, and acute post-infectious glomerular nephritis. Yes, we'll get to it. <laughs> but those are the two that we're going to talk about. So with these guys, obviously an alteration in kidneys, hence the nephro, right, nephrotic syndrome. 
But this is not simply a disease state that they have for a few weeks or months and it goes away. This is a chronic condition that they then have to deal with. It will have periods of exacerbations and remissions like a lot of things do. But what I want you to think about with any kind of nephrotic syndrome, acute or not acute, think edema. There's different reasons why they have edema, but think edema. So when I say edema in kids, where does it happen first? Does it do hands and feet like it does in adults? We have what you put in edema in kids usually? No. Where do you get puppy? Mm -hmm. Maybe. Don't say feet though. Abdomen, face. Face happens first. Think about those puppy. Oh yeah, those puppies. They have edema in their face. A lot faster in kids than they do in adults. Very ordinal edema is what it's called. Right? So they're gonna start getting puppy here. And then their bellies tend to get a little puffy. And then their hands and feet get puffy and then they're young. So it tends to be how it goes. Now, are there differences in like the heart condition too versus a um, nephrotic syndrome too? Yeah. Then you're going to have heart failure versus a flu edema. So back to nephrotic syndrome. Glomeruli, filters, right? Think of it like the trap door. It opens to let things in and out as it's supposed to, right? So there's that membrane. It's a, a membrane that covers that glomeruli. When we're in nephrotic syndrome, Chronic, they have in terms of the um, glomerular basement membrane. What that means is the doors are too open, right? And so what it's doing is letting out one of the really big molecules that we want them to see. We want them to eat protein, right? What happens is these kids, because they have inflammation, we can use that for complex disorder. Inflammation, <laughs> their membrane is actually inflamed, which allows for it to be open. So it's all happening at the glomeruli. When they have this opening, proteins get out. So how does that lead to edema? Think about the relationship between protein and fluid. Protein is not in the body. Now, protein is going to leave the body. Well, right. And where does the word fluid go? Well, it's all the Well, but you're still saying it's coming out of the cell like the third stage of the cell. Yeah, but in this case, it's actually staying in the third stage. They have edema because the proteins don't do not pull it into the vessel. Right? Protein has left the body, so it can't pull the fluid out of the tissue so it stays there. So do they have fluid in their body? Yes. Is it in their circulation? No. So it tends to be out in their tissues, third spacing, because the protein is gone. Think about the little um, describing kids uh, in, that you see in third world countries on, on TV. Right? What do you see? The big old pot bellies. Why do they have big old pot bellies that are starting? Why? Protein deficiency. All goes back to protein deficiency. If they don't have protein in their diet, which they don't, if they're getting A, they're probably right. Have no, very little protein. Right? We want them to have things like beans and meat and things like that in order to have protein, not those kinds of things. If they don't have protein, then the fluid that they are able to get in doesn't get out through their tissues, it stays in their tissues because the protein isn't there to draw it into the vessel. Okay, so all of this is because of protein deficiency. These guys are peeing out the protein because in the commercials, don't get the protein in their diet, right? But these guys are peeing out the protein. That's the bottom line capital of, of the product syndrome. They're peeing out the protein. So they have edema, they have massive proteinuria because they're peeing out the protein. They have hypoalbuminemia. What is albumin? Yeah. Protein. <laughs> right. It's based on nutrition often, but is your protein. Albumin is a protein. So if somebody is low on protein, what are we giving? Iron. Maybe. That's if they're iron deficient. If they're low on protein, we're going to give them high protein diet. And if that's not enough, we're going to give them albumin, which we have to do. Yeah, it's usually a low glass bottle. Maybe so, but usually it's a glass bottle because it's a blood test, right? But albumin is something that we're going to give and the volume is standard. Because we're down, we put albumin, we put protein in the vessel. So what's it going to do to the fluid? Draw it into the tissue and put it in the vessel. So albumin is a volume of standard in the vessel. Make sense? So hypoproteinemia, they don't have enough protein in their blood. You're good on the urea. Right? The protein urea is in the urine, emia is in the blood. Right? Want to make sure we're good on our definitions.
then we get this odd hyperlipidemia. And the idea why the, why the body now is like, oh, you don't have enough protein. I think I'll make you have some fat. It, it's triglycerides that you really go through the roof. They have hyperlipidemia. This is the liver's response to protein deficiency. Okay? So if there's protein deficiency, one of the things that may happen is the liver is going to go, oh, you don't have enough protein? I'll give you a chance to do it. Does it really help them? No, not in any way. Right? But it's still a body response. And so why do they have altered immunity? Yeah, so all this goes to that protein. What, um, what fights infection? Okay, that's one type of a antibody. Antibodies fight infection. IgG is one type of an antibody, that's your immunoglobulin, right? But your antibodies fight off infection. What's antibody made out of? Protein. So if you don't have protein, you can't have antibodies to fight infection. And your body's already working hard on the antibody system, right? But that's how that patho ties together. All the proof. No Immunoglobulins are just one type of antibodies. You're going to put more antibodies too. Right? You guys must have just heard something about immunoglobulins. It's stuck on there. That's what I always remember. Yeah. All right. So we know that it is increased in prevalence and in strength in African American and Hispanic. This is don't know this in particular, but minimal change nephrotic syndrome is the most common. Eighty-five percent of cases are that occurs between ages two years and seven, but what do we say it was? Chronic. It doesn't go away. It's for the rest of your life, I guess. You yeah. Know, it, some outgrow it in adulthood as their kidneys are more mature, but some do not. And we don't know why it happens. We think it's triggered by an upper respiratory infection, blah, blah, blah. So are we going to have a question that says, what's the cause of the chronic syndrome? Really? Because we don't know. Right? It's like autoimmune. We don't know. So what are you going to see? Edema. Pale. Hypertension. Why hypertension? We think hypotension. And then they, you might have some hypertension now, though, as a result of the body clamping down because they're suffocating in the first place. They're going to be fussy. They're not going to be hungry. Here's another key of chronic hematuria. Because as those big proteins are popping through the membrane, it's irrigating the membrane and bleeding. But this is key with the chronic that is hematuria. Decreased urine output, that's where that's going to just go off from, and it's going to be high. Oh, one more thing. Why, why do we have hypertension? Hyper hypertension. Hypertension. High blood pressure because they're clamping down because they don't have enough fluid. Hyper. Oh, hyper. I don't HPN is hyper. Also hemp concentrated, so they're probably going to be high anyway because they don't have the fluid or the plasma to dilute it out. So there's not going to appear on their labs to be any of it. Once you give them fluid, they might be, but that's not the primary concern. But because of that peeing blood to the DNA, sure. Right? Because they have that hematuria, they're needing some as well as not being able to make what they need. Respiratory distress because they have fluid now in their lungs because there's not. Um, the protein to be able to pull it from their lungs, protein loss, seems so rudimentary, doesn't it? Their hair might break. But don't you know this is the thing that brings most parents in? I found hair on their pillow. What's happening? Not the fact that they gained 10 pounds in the last three weeks from fluid. No, we bring them in because their hair is breaking, <laughs> right? Um, increased risk for thrombosis. First of all, what's thrombosis? Blood clot, right? 
So why am I so soft? Yeah, the blood sick because the plasma flow, because they don't have the fluid. Right? So increased blood viscosity, increased thickness of the blood. What's that going to do with the It's Yeah, everything will be concentrated. Yeah. Right? And they'll be gaining weight because of that fluid. Don't worry about pressure. So what are we going to do? What kind of test? UA. Your analysis, the UA. We're going to look to see what's in the urine. Where's that albumin? <clears throat> We're going to look at the other because what is <laughs> we know they're going to have likely have high sodium, right? Because they're not clearing it. What does BUN tell you? Yeah. Yep. And neonate and creatinine together tell you kidney function. Why are we looking at cholesterol? Hyperlipidemia and the fact that triglycerides are the key group. And just general red blood because we know everything. If they're hypoalbuminemia, they don't have enough uh, protein in the blood. That's our diagnostic number. Don't memorize it. We would look that up. All right, it's just for your reference. And same thing, urinary protein excretion greater than or equal to 40. What should it be? all get out, yes. Lower the immune system. Fluid. Sometimes fluid retention. We want more of that. But that's just our treatment. Anyway, 
diuretics to get that extra fluid off. Correct the underlying cause. We said we don't necessarily know what it is, but sometimes it's secondary to something else that we could fix. Albumin if needed. Albumin is always going to be IV. So this is going to be an inpatient treatment. And then there's a few other things that we do to help with inflammation and patient life. That's it. Is there like a specific diuretic that we want to start with? What's your heavy hitter? What's a heavy hitter for that for diuretic? Ferrosamide. Good job. <laughs> Because that's your heavy hitter. Yeah. Do you want them on maintenance? Just one second. Do you want them on maintenance? Ferrosamide. Why? Because it's delivered. Almost potassium, right? It is not potassium sparing diuretic. So, what diuretics are you going to want to use? Spironolactone, albastone, hydrochlorothiazide, HPTC, hydrochlorothiazide might be one. But then that has, that's a combination, because now that's a cardiac med and a diuretic. So HPTC is a combination of meds. So the albactone, spironolactone, albactone, those are your potassium sparing diuretics. Maintenance? Yes. As far as, think of it like rescue maintenance. I like to put meds in two categories. Is it a rescue med or is it a maintenance med? So if it's rescue, which one are we using? Yeah. And if it's maintenance, now we're talking potassium sparing. Okay? We'll talk the same thing when we talk asthma. What's a rescue med for asthma? Albuterol. Albuterol, right? I'll switch for a second. So albuterol, rescue med for asthma. What's a maintenance med? Provair, Atrovent, something along those lines, right? Provair, um, something along those lines. So think about meds in a rescue or a maintenance category, and it will help you think, remember, what do I use right now? We'll talk about it with seizure meds. Rescue med for seizure versus a maintenance med for seizure. They are very different meds, right? Are some people on albuterol as maintenance? Yeah, they're for the controlled asthmatics. But this should be a rescue med, at least not always used that way, right? Okay. Yeah. Oh, I didn't finish there, so. Yes, we use diuretics for the but we have to watch what they're doing too with that. How do you monitor that? These guys are going to be inpatient and then they're going to be for Yeah, they're going to be inpatient for a bit. Yes, absolutely. Daily weight. Um, if it's a baby, what else are we going to do measurement wise? Okay, what else? Measure me. Head and abdomen, right? We said ascites, they get a lot of. Of the fluid retained in their abdomen, so we want to do abdominal circumference, etc. Good. All right, so nursing interventions. What do we have to do? We said making sure we're doing daily weights, making sure we're doing measurements, so that all goes with your eyes and nose. Vital signs, these are not critical hypertension things. The next disease process we talk about lymphocytes is skin breakdown, not only because of the steroids, but what else? What else puts them at risk for skin issues? Protein deficiency and probably in bed. Yeah, one more. What's the hallmark symptom? Edema. And if you have fluid between your skin and your tissues, you're at risk for skin breakdown. So simply having edema that all nephritic kids are going to have, nephritic kids. Okay. All nephritis kids are going to have edema when they're uh, having masturbation. Okay. Here's the contrasting nephritis. So yes, this is a good study technique. Do a chronic versus a disease chart, right? Do a comparison. So now we're doing acute post-infectious venereal nephritis, otherwise known as a pigeon. But I will usually say it's post acute post infectious venereal nephritis because I want you to hear the word acute, <laughs> right? Because that's what makes it different than chronic. So when you're talking about acute, 
Oh, look, it's the same kind of thing. Glomeruli have inflammation. But it's a different cause. Okay, so we know that the problem is still with the glomeruli, but these guys are not, do not have open doors and they're not seeing as much protein. Yes, they're still losing some, but not as much. And I'll tell you why in a sec. Okay? We also know the cause. <clears throat> we know the cause. Right? If we know the cause for something, we also know how to treat it, hopefully. Let's look at the cause. Group A, beta hemolytic stress. The A is the important part. Beta is just one of the types of group A. But group A, beta hemolytic stress. So what's stress? Virus? Fungus? Okay. Oh, good, it's bacteria. <laughs> so if we know which strep is a bacteria, how do we treat bacterial infection? Antibiotics. We know to treat and turn it to gamma. Okay? Yes, there's still more to it, of course. But did we talk about antibiotics with chronic at all? No. We already know a major difference between the two. Okay? Can also be a few others, but this is the one to know. Group A, beta hemolytic strep. Again, same ages, ages between two and six. But look at the path up for these guys. These guys have a strep infection. Where does strep infection usually happen? Through an allergic secondary. Skin. A lot of skin infection. <laughs> it could be. <laughs> um, but usually it's going to be fungal or uh, it could be bacteria. But, all right, so they're going to have a strep infection. It doesn't mean they didn't get it treated. They could have had strep throat and they were on their antibiotics and their throat got better. But 10 to 21 days after that, then we would start seeing symptoms you know. Okay? 50% of the time, you never know what happened because the kids are asymptomatic enough that they didn't tell their parents they were peeing frog urine. Right? <laughs> they didn't even think about it. See, most kids look at the urine. No. Right? Especially when we're in the two to seven days. They get sucked into a diaper. Do you know you have dark urine? Not really. Right? So if they're still a diaper kid, it's hard to see concentration of urine in a diaper. Um, but not everybody picks up on that. Um, I think I blame it on nursing, but my nasal, so my small fever smell was burned out years ago. I can't smell hardly anything. It's just gone, right? So is that going to be something that I pick up on with my kids? No, I'm going to have to work with nasal concentration. It's harder to, harder to see. But yes, you will smell concentrated urine, but we'll talk about why that is. Is this a useful thing to start? Because normally you're on course of antibiotics for about 10 days. Yep. yep. And here's where the glomeruli come in. Remember before we said chronic, they were open doors, pushing the gut out. Look at what it is now. Damage to the glomeruli itself, right? To the membrane. And now we have antibody antigen complexes. That should sound familiar for something. So you have an antibody, it's supposed to fight the antigen, right? What happens when an antibody combines with an antigen? What kind of disorder are you having? Autoimmune, it's perfect. And when you have autoimmune, they form these complexes, and I want you to think about it like being under a bridge. Because if we have somebody with, give me an example of an autoimmune disorder. Okay? Give me a little. Yeah, you have a dark autoimmune. Down syndrome, not autoimmune. That's perfect. I know one called it by Think about, okay, think about things like lupus, right? MS, multiple sclerosis, things like that, right? I just want to give you a clear picture because, yes, some of your other ones are good examples, but they don't have the same sort of thing. Some is the body attacking itself, but they don't have the same sort of deep setting into it. So you have somebody with um, rheumatoid arthritis, somebody with lupus, somebody with um, MS. What's the biggest complaint? Pain, joint pain, right? And that's because of these antibody antigen complexes that are like bricks sitting in their joints, right? So these antigen antibody complexes here are the grit that's filling up the glomeruli membrane. So instead of peeing out protein, now they have a blocked membrane, and so the fluid stays. They still have edema. We said all the hard kids have edema, but they have it because the fluid can't get out. See the difference in the path up? Okay. Mm, they're not, not going to pee as much. There's, this isn't going to be 
clogging every glomeruli they have, but they will have decreased urine output, yes. Okay? They become concentrated because of. So they have inflammation and obstruction of the glomeruli because of this antibody complex. So is this an autoimmune disorder? Yes, it is. If there's antigen antibody complexes. However, all the examples of um, the autoimmune disorders you gave were chronic. This is not. There are a few cases, other examples of um, autoimmune disorders that are short lived, they run its course almost like a virus and then they're gone. This is one of those. These kids do not have acute clumps of sexual glomerulitis, glomerulitis forever, nor is it something that comes back. One and done. Okay? So it's a weird autoimmune thing going on. All of that. Yeah, that wouldn't cause sepsis. Could they have neurosepsis and have infection in the kidney because the urine's not getting out? Sure. But not, this isn't going to produce a sepsis usually. I'll show you what it does in the future. So again, 50% of them, you're never going to know they have it because they're going to have it. They're going to have concentrated urine for a few weeks and then it goes away. Right? But the other 50% of kids are going to be symptomatic to the point that it's obvious and needs follow up. It happens all of a sudden. It's not, we don't know why some kids get this and some kids don't, but we know that it's often linked with that group A, B, and home like strep. They're going to have flank pain. Why? It's where the kidneys are. <laughs> right? So that's why it hurts there. They're fussy. They're tired. They have a fever. Did we see fever with chronic? Nope. But nor do we see bacterial, right? These guys are known for the hematuria that comes with it because of the, the damage that's happening to the glomeruli. When you think autoimmune, all those things you said, right? Crohn's, lupus, MS, all of them are tissue breakdown. That's autoimmune disorders. Here, it's glomeruli breakdown. That's the tissue that's being affected. Because of that, there's going to be bleeding, okay? So when it says microscopic hematuria in, in nearly all cases, that means 95% or more of these kids are going to have microscopic hematuria. How is that different than gross hematuria? Right, it just shows up like a concentrated urine. Is it still there? Yeah, you do it this thick, it's going to turn that bright purple, right? <laughs> if that's what your indicator is on that brand of this thing. When you see gross hematuria, these guys are peeing blood, right? And so 50% of these cases, they're going to be peeing blood. It doesn't come out red because it's already being processed through the glomeruli, so it comes out smoke or tea colored. So it again, so it's concentrated, but it's dark almost like a dark red, like digested blood, okay? So what was the, what were they peeing out in nephritis syndrome? Protein. Protein. What are they peeing out here? Blood. Blood. okay? <clears throat> Again, edema, 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 because these guys can't pee it out, so they're going to have extra fluid. Carrier what happens first. These guys are more likely to have dependent edema of the feet and ankles than the others, so it goes with extra fluid. And it's not the protein deficiency where it starts based all over. Edema may progress so that it is in the lungs or the belly. But these guys are at risk for acute hypertension. You said hypertension in the other, but this is acute hypertension to the point that you could have a kid with a blood pressure of 200 over 100 when they're supposed to be 70 over 40. Right? So these guys might have neuro symptoms that's your encephalopathy, headaches, nausea, vomiting, irritability, lethargy, seizures, you know, things like that. Okay. as a result of this hypertension. What's oliguria? Not enough heat. What would no heat be? Anemia. Anemia, right? Yep. Do, do you have a tendency to say so the volume? Yes, full volume, absolutely. The other thing that's happening as there's inflammation happening in the kidney, there's a, certainly a very direct link with kidney pressure and blood pressure. Right? If your blood pressure is low in your body, what's the first body system being affected? Kidney. Your kidney, because it's built up as a force, followed by your kidney. Right? Same thing happens if you have high pressure in your kidneys, it's going to, the body's going to respond to having some high pressure as well, sometimes in the liver. But just know that there's a link with kidney and blood pressure. Right? That's all. That, that works. <laughs> Let's get into specifics. All right, test. 
Do you want to correct me to see what the kidney function is doing? You A to C, if it's protein or hematuria, they might still be having some protein, but certainly not the 40 that we saw in the liver. Why are there white blood cells and ESR going to be up? Yep, and not just bacterial, but inflammation. So tell me what ESR is. Okay. Sonical sedimentation rate. All right. Dead rate. What's another measure of inflammation? Yeah. And what's your CRP stand for? Uh huh. C reactive protein. Both of these. Um, both of these indicate inflammation, okay? H and H might have anemia more so here with it than it is with any other. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So they're going to have this more than your chronic nephritis patients. Serum lipids are going to be up because the liver is still going to pop it up. Serum protein is going to be down because of the insulin. Bed rest because of the fluid. You rarely see the disease. Bed rest. Sodium restriction, fluid restriction, diuretics, why antibiotics? Bacteria, right? The other thing we got to do is check their family members and see all these little strokes that they see in the lip strokes. And again, watch for that hypertension. We use the complication of untreated strep, so if it is caught early and treated, you can't. It doesn't have to do with whether or not it's treated. It's not like scarlet fever that happens because of untreated strep. It's just happening. Yeah. Good question. Or if it's been untreated. Do they have to give them a different type of antibiotic? Might have to repeat the course, but not necessarily that type. All right, eyes, nose, weight, vital signs. You see it's not per routine or two shift, it's two two. And diet education because of that sodium. Okay. Toddler is admitted to the facility with nephrotic syndrome. The nurse carefully monitors the toddler's fluid intake and checks the urine regularly with a reagent strip, which la which finding is the nurse most likely to see? Protein area? Go ahead. We'll stop here.